What is up everyone? Tis I, Z Gaming Guy, and I'm joined by Dooney, my Android. Uh, I put a poll on Twitter asking if you guys wanted him in one of these, and by one vote, you managed to get in here, so don't fuck it up. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> so if you don't know how this show works, uh, Z Talks, we go through, well I guess I go through, and get comments that ask me interesting questions. I answer them, give my opinions, I listen to your opinions, and before we go into new topics, I like to go back to the previous time and read some of your comments and elaborate further on them. So one of the things I uh, asked last time is if like aliens came down and I had to say one thing or do one thing to try to like get them to not kill us all, what would it be? And elaborating on that is Drew McGuire and, and he says, alien race, honestly tough, hope no one's relying on me. And as for uh, like memories as a kid, he said uh, his favorite ones are playing like Majora's Mask with his best friend, Jeff. My brother's name is Jeff, so is it the same person? But I mean, did you did you play Majora's Mask? A little bit, not too much. I wasn't crazy Zelda. You were crazy. That scared the shit out of me, so I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> like with the skeletons and the like uh, big open area. I remember, but it was a cool game. One I'd like to play if it got remastered, personally. Uh, and as for the aliens, no, no one relies on you. Fair enough. <laughs> and also referring to the aliens coming down. This is not Rex Ganymede. <laughs> Interesting name. Says, I would tell the visiting alien, maybe don't vaporize all of us. With all that advanced tech you, you claim to have, surely you can make a more informed deliberation on whom to keep and whom to blow away. Good point. So you've essentially, uh, minor spoilers to Infinity War, but you're gonna Thanos this shit, is what you're you're implying. Well, except I guess that's random, but, like, I, we, it's funny, because him and I, we were talking about this the other night, where how sh the shitty people are, and we're just like, man, if someone could just come down and just wipe out half the population that is, like, dumb and ignorant and racist and all that stuff, like, man, the world would be better off. Like, it, there's no need for all the stupidity that goes on, and we just propagate it, it's just, ugh. Yeah, so... I get, I get what you're saying. I, it'd be nice if they had some sort of tech where they're like, it's like the douchebag scanner, and they can just hover it over the planet. And they're like, wow, this size has a lot of douchebags. <laughs> like, <laughs> as simple as that. Well, where's the douchebag line fall? Because, you know, I, I can be a douche a lot. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but have you ever went out and stabbed someone? No, no. Not, 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 not recently. Your, not to your knowledge, at least. <laughs> not, not consciously. <laughs> Maybe you're only half vaporized then. Like, just the lower half. So you can't actually, like, make any more children. Uh, well, I mean, that's fair. You don't want to have douchebags just continue to spread around. Exactly. Which happens. Normally, those douchebags are the one that has five kids and stuff. Oh, my God. Right. But, yeah. So, that's an interesting point. So this comment is also referring to the alien ones, because that's what a lot of people were replying to. And this is Can't BQ saying, essentially, that they think... They're more worried about our intentions versus the aliens, if aliens were to visit, saying, uh, I believe the leaders of the world would instinctively attack for self-preservation. It's a scary thought. It makes you feel quite powerless as an individual to imagine relying on world leaders to make these decisions. And that's a very, very good point, and I totally agree with you on that. Like, someone in this world is going to be like, aliens, and like try to shoot them up, instead of trying to have a conversation or trying any sort of diplomatic way first and they're gonna fuck us uh like like you said uh knowing that there's like one per well not just one person i guess but there's a couple people who really hold power over our country and like they don't always have the best of intentions sometimes <laughs> so humans as a species are really bad at getting along with other humanoids too really Right. We're just like, no, you're slightly intelligent. I can be the only intelligent thing. Yeah, and so, I don't know. Like, especially if some leader has an inferiority complex and they see aliens coming down with, like, nice pecs and a good body and they're, like, this superhuman version of us, essentially. And <laughs> you make me feel inferior. Blow you up. I have nukes. So, yeah, that, that'd be a bad recipe. All right, now we're going to move on to some of the questions. And this is from Smokey2011. Saying, again, another alien question. What if aliens come down, gave us a choice of three things they could help us with? One, to help the planet. Two, to help out mankind. I mean, those kind of go hand in hand. Or three, to teach us how to go to a new solar system. Which one would I pick? Well, see, the first two, I mean, the second one's really vague. What, like, what does it mean to help out mankind? What if to help out mankind is one and three? But assuming you meant, like, maybe disease-wise or something like that, like us specifically, 
I'd say the third option, teaching us how to go to a new solar system, is by far the most beneficial. The first two are very band-aid patches, like yeah, this is a temporary fix, but it's still going to have only a limited amount of resources and stuff like that. So I think uh, if they taught us how to do some sort of FTL travel faster than light or somewhere close to that, then I think we'd benefit a lot more being able to get to more planets and stuff. What do you think? I'd be worried about number one specifically because to help the planet, like, let's face it, humans are terrible on this planet. Like, <laughs> we are the problem for the planet. good way to fix the planet is to get rid of us, you know? Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> like, it would need to be educational planet. Like, okay, we need to teach humans to take care of the planet. Yeah, how just... to properly cultivate and stuff and, like, what not to destroy. But I, I agree. The third one would be best because there's a lot of planets that people can have that uh, have it... Well, I can't talk, so there you go. <laughs> can make habitable. And as for the first one too, like let's just say they taught us like the proper way to maintain a planet and stuff. <laughs> Even if we know, we're not gonna do it. Like I don't think anyone, anyone on the planet, thinks that littering is good for it. Yet it happens all the time. So I think, like I said, the first two are just too like reliant on humans doing it properly. Mm -hmm. Like unless the aliens came down and like policed everything was like hey no quit littering you little shit i'm gonna vaporize you <laughs> even still we'd do it probably if people would try and be sneaking I'm doing what they're not looking. yeah we'll try to do like the sneak thing where their hands like at their leg and they like don't act like they notice them dro like dropping or something uh i don't think that's gonna work so we'd have like traveling to new solar systems is easily the most beneficial in my opinion <laughs> this is an interesting question by my boy ray ray because i can't say your name still <laughs> and he says my question for you this week, it's a little longer, so bear with me. My question for you this week is, what do you think about people who have no point of reference to difficult times and complain about something simple, like their cell phone drops to 3G and they have a uh, fit when I remember when I was happy to see 3G invented? Or someone complains about having to wait two days for Amazon to ship a package when it used to take four to six weeks. Are kids today too entitled, or do they get a pass since these are literally the hardest things they've ever gone through? Uh... That's going to be a question that's going to be asked forever, essentially, because, I mean, we have all had that grandparent, father, whatever, who is like, back in my day, I used to have to fight bears and dragons to get to school and just trug, trug through six feet of snow. Like, they always had this, like, ridiculous story of how much harder it was. And we've had the same thing, you know, growing up, we've had, like, when you've had to blow on cartridges because it wasn't working properly for video games. The brick phone. The brick phones. <laughs> uh, in a way, the cartridge thing was oddly like satisfying though, because it made a nice little like woo when you did it, and then you're like, "That's it, I'm a fucking genius." So it felt a little good thinking you're just fixing it. Like, I don't know if that was really doing it, but um, I think it's a necessary step though, because it makes you appreciate upgrades as they come more. So we appreciate the current thing, and we're able to like enjoy it for what it is. And for them, eventually, this will be hard when in the future. You know what I mean? Today's things will be hard, I think, later on, and they'll appreciate it more later on. So, you know, it's kind of like being born with money versus being poor and gaining money. You're going to appreciate it more. Um, so, I think it's fine. I think it is annoying for us when we see it, because it's like, <laughs> you know, it was a lot harder back then, but it's not back then. That's the fact of the matter, you know? True. So, I can't really fault them for it, you know? It's just how it is nowadays. What do you think? I think people have a bad habit of being instantly gratified, like they need it right now. Mm. But like back 20 years ago or something, we didn't have that. We thought having it right now was in six weeks, like he was up. Mm. They were saying. And so the fact that everything is so quick, like just makes us more impatient. Yeah. And I could see it getting worse and worse because of that. That's my only worry. I mean, like, well, back then, when even when we were young, internet was hardly a thing. You know, and when internet goes down now, I fucking hate it. <laughs> so it's not like just because I was used to it before, I'm not like okay with it when it goes down now. Like I still hate it. So I'm, sometimes I'm like that whiny kid. You know what I mean? Just not with every single thing. And sometimes I look back fondly at you know the way things used to be. Like even though they weren't necessarily as convenient, I still kind of admired. Like like when you went out and got like a game from Blockbuster. Remember Blockbuster? Some of you don't know what that is, <laughs> but it was a thing. Okay, it's where you got games and stuff. When you went over and got Blockbuster, you rented it for a week, and you had no reviews to watch or anything like that, so you gotta go buy the cover, and if that shit's not good, you better fucking play it anyway, because you just spent the money on it, you know what I mean? So, to like, get this random gem of a game that you didn't, like for me it was Onimusha 3, 
I didn't, I was like, whatever, I guess it's a game. And because of the lack of information stuff, I was just pleasantly surprised. And even though like I like more having all the information available to me so I can make proper you know, purchases, it was still, I still look at it fondly, kind of, even though I hated it at the same time. You know what I mean? I remember when we would get games from GameStop and then you discovered Gamefly? Yeah, game. It's a game play. The one that mailed it to you or something. Like yeah. Netflix for gaming. You know, like yeah. Just being like, <gasps> whole new worlds open. Yeah, yeah. Like this is so convenient. It still takes like three weeks to get it, but <laughs> oh my god, I don't have to go anywhere. And now everything's just instantaneous, like instant download. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's an interesting world. Well, plus back then though, they also had to release games full and proper. Whereas now they can release it early access with microtransactions, so it's debatable whether things actually improved or not over the years. So with a lot of these, Brian Ware, I'm glad you like the God of War series. Just look at my comments. Thanks. Okay, so here's one that might be controversial, but that's okay. We're all about that in the Z Gaming Guy channel. This is from Sam Harms. Sam says, maybe you could talk about your spiritual beliefs next time. Do you have any? Are you a member of any particular religion? Didn't you say you were Jewish at one point? <laughs> no, I didn't. But uh. I mean, I made a joke, well, not a joke, I guess, but, like, he used to call me Jack because we combined Jew with Zach's, so, so you're Jewish Zach, so Jack. So it made me, I had mentioned that, and it got mistranslated somewhere in there, but uh, as for, do I belong to any particular religion? No, not really. I, I'm uh, one of those people who's agnostic. I don't really lean anywhere. I guess I lean a little more towards atheism than anything. But I'm not, like, going to completely ignore the potential possibility of a higher power. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm not going to be going to church or anything like that. So I think that's how a lot of people are nowadays. Um, when Detroit Become Human gave me a survey, I wasn't recording this at the time, but it gave me a survey and asked, like, do you believe in God? And I said, I don't know. And a majority of it actually, like 60% or something, was no, they don't. And that was kind of surprising to me because I thought, like, it just it just feels like more people believe in God than don't. Mm -hmm. But it's leaning more towards people don't at this point. And, um, I mean, that's fine, I guess. It's just, like, as long as people are still respecting others' decisions, you know what I mean? Like, you can be religious, you can be not religious, as long as you're a good person, that's fine. Like, if a religion's causing you to make better decisions for yourself and others around you, then there should be no reason to put them down for it. Um, but for, for me personally, I don't really believe in anything in particular, uh, except for science. <laughs> but, uh... See it, believe it. Right, see it, believe it kind of guy. So it's, it's hard for me to really say anything else aside from that. And like, you're kind of in a similar boat, right? I believe that we're... Something had to initiate everything. But I think, like, religion and science is pretty close together. They just have different words for the same thing kind of a deal. Yeah, that's that makes sense. That's fair. But, yeah, that's an interesting question. Like... I'm, what do you? How about you guys? Are you guys more religious or not? Like, again, keep it like civil in the comments. Like, there's no reason to bash on other people for their beliefs. But uh, I'm just kind of curious, you know, if you guys, what you guys think. And for our last question, we it comes from Scar asking, "What would be the worst way to die?" Ooh. <laughs> Fun question, huh? Well, if we're gonna exclude something like torture, because I mean, tor there's not tor the whole point of torture is to get them in pain. But I'm gonna say like it's a single thing that causes your death versus like a multitude of things um oh boy like i guess <laughs> I, it's hard to say like what am i more afraid of like a fear or the pain you know like if you wake up and you're buried underground in a coffin i would freak the fuck out and i would not want to go out like that that'd be brutal that'd be brutal that'd be slow but you wouldn't really feel a whole lot of pain but you'd be panicking like crazy it's like, would I prefer something like that over, like, burning to death, let's say? I don't know. That's hard. Um, burning to death would be painful until you die from that. It would be a lot quicker, though. Yeah. But Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, that's, a, that's a really hard one to say just because it kind of... <laughs> there comes a point where you're, you can't even really comprehend how awful it would be. You know what I mean? Like, it's like... True. It's like trying to comprehend like the vastness of the space. Like we can try, but we can't. And as for like these ways of dying, like we'll just say oh, we're just kind of like, oh man, that would really suck. But like, it would really suck, <laughs> and I wouldn't want to experience either of them and test it out <laughs> just to see which one I hate more. But the first two that came to mind was you know waking up in a coffin six feet under and burning to death. Uh, apparently, drowning is fairly peaceful. Uh, yeah, some people like say. To sleep, I think. Yeah, that's what I hear. But. As for those two, um, lava 
apparently is awful. Like, I thought it'd be one of those more instantaneous things, but because of how solid lava is, uh, you if you were to, like, fall into it, first of all, you'd hit it, and it would, like, be like a concrete for a moment, and then, like, boils your skin first and your blood and starts popping things inside of you or something. Like, I remember seeing a video on, like, how terrible lava deaths would actually be. Um, that's, yeah, that's pretty metal, honestly. But, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I guess something that has to do with burning slash lava-like or the buried thing. What about you? I have a big... I, I guess it's kind of the fear category, I guess. Being eaten, like... Whatever's eating you could be terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't imagine, like, hyenas or something that don't really go for a kill shot. They go with, like, ripping they just you apart. Shred you apart, yeah. Like zombies and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, that would be just. I don't know. Being lit on fire, I'm a pyro, so. Yeah, At least it's a cool way to go out. <laughs> like, well, that's the way Donnie would go. <laughs> or, I mean, imagine something like, um, you know those, like, wood chipper things? If you fall feet first into Ooh. there? Because that's a excruciating amount of pain for, what? A while. Eight seconds, ten seconds or something, maybe? Like, too long. <laughs> yeah, way too long. Time would slow down for sure there. Um, the only the only thing you would hope for is you pass out from, like, fear or pain. Uh, I mean, you can get creative, sure. But, like, if, if like, like, torture was a thing, you know, like, imagine someone sawing your finger in half, like, every finger, and then going down all the way through you or something, like, just torture would be the worst. But, God, I don't, now you're, now, now I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. What are you asking this? I'm <laughs> scarred. Get it? Because you scar asked me? I see what you did there. That's pretty good. That's spectacular. So, yeah, I'm curious uh, what you guys think about what's, what do you think would be the worst way to die? Like, are you more worried about the fear that's behind it or the pain that's behind it i guess obviously you could be afraid of pain but you know what i'm saying like there's just two different like ways i would hate to go out and i'm assuming that's the same for mo many other people so i'm curious what you guys think is like ranks at the top and uh, I, and of course all the other questions i asked i'm interested to see what you have to say but uh hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, i'm gonna try to do this a little more regularly like i was before uh just had to sort some things out and it seems we're for the most part good and as for Dooney uh, he'll be in and out of some videos and some other like scary things because he gets scared easily so expect that but uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one